would like to continue. We have a very interactive and a very intense and fruitful day of our first C conference. Now, let's think about the games. You know, out of all the bricks that the game is being construed, interface, gameplay, design, graphics, everything that gets together and joins in the game. There's one mechanism that people do not, well, tend to oversee, and that's the music. That's the sounds, the uh, whisper of voices, the rustle of leaves, everything that creates a full impression of the world we're immersed in. And now Slava Dudin is here to tell you about all the secrets of the sound in a game, and I'm pretty sure he is the expert because he's worked at Strategic Sound being, I'm sorry, Strategic Music, yes, as a sound designer, and now he is responsible for music in World of Warships. And he is also voicing over Cap in our another famous title. Yeah, hello everyone, my name is Slava Dudin. I'm a sound designer and I'm a composer for World of Warships. And the last couple of years I've been uh, quite uh, active dealing with interactive music. So let me give you some overview of what interactive music is all about. Simply speaking, it's the system of replaying musical fragments and segments that react to the normal game events in real time. So what kind of uh, game events can there be? Normal events, which are one-off things, such as steps, blasts, uh, clicking on a button. You do something once in a game, you got a feedback from the game that something happened, and then you can replay the sound or you can attach your sound to that event. What else can there be? A game state. What's that? When you change your game location, when there's night and day change, when weather conditions uh, also alter uh, everything. I'll take an HP level of your player, 0 to 100, and you can do one state from 0 to 50 and another one from 50 to 100. And that's where you can connect your sounds or music to. Or there can be some real-time parameters, RTPC. And that's like the speed of or the pace of moving or the distance to something like the distance from me to this podium here is 100 centimeters as soon as i start getting closer 90 80 70 60 50 and you can attach some sound level to that i mean the uh, uh, or some sound effects to that um, when you sound a game it's quite different from when you sound or when you put a sound to a movie. Because when you do it with a movie, you have a linear progression of events. Say, a character starts moving, he's been shot, he falls, he survived, and he stood up, jumped back to action, and uh, had his revenge. Based on the sequence of events, a sound designer or a sound producer can build the drama. For example, when the hero falls, we can add some pulsing rhythms that would imitate heartbeats. And the composer might also devise a way of uh, transferring this music further on and uh, building on top of that. But when you deal with the game, you have to deal with uncertainty and you have to deal with unpredictability. And your actions or the consequences in the game will depend a lot from your actions or the actions of your players. So music in the game is needed to describe a picture which is adequate of the current game situation. So every time you compose a music piece, you use some musical forms, such as um, the, uh, uh, the start, the, the middle, or the end, the culmination, or the finals, the grand final, the overture, and so on and so forth. And unless uh, you are trying to uh, describe a particular situation in the movie it will all depend on the drama in the movie well in the film it's quite uh, logical you follow the actions basically but in the game it's all quite different because you never know where your character is going to end up in just a sec Angelina uh, can you bring back the cursor
Well, for example, the character is walking in the wooden in the wood. A nice breeze is blowing, and this nice music is flowing. But here comes a crowd of horrible monsters. The music becomes more worried. The hero comes straight into action, and the music turns into a battle theme. And he's almost killed, but in the last moment, he uses a feature that he's reserved for his bad day, and he wins over all of his enemies, and he continues trotting in the woods. The whole sequence of states could have, I don't know, passed in 15 or 20 seconds. And when you have a rapidly changing system, it is quite difficult to preempt, to foresee where will a moment come when you have to move from one musical piece to the other, from one composition to the other. I forgot one thing. Yeah. Sorry. So if a music piece, say the first or the second piece, is quite a complex musical piece when you use different tonality, uh, different tones, and the, um, the transition phase might be a disruption uh, in the overall experience. But there are two basic approaches when you come to create interactive music, and they're called vertical and horizontal systems. So what are they? Let's take a horizontal system. And here, musical pieces and musical fragments just follow one after the other, and they switch, depending on some game triggers or states the change in those states. Let's take music fragment number one. Imagine it's a cyclic thing. It just plays around unless something happens. Well, imagine the map location changes and you move on to the next map location. So that's the horizontal system. Mario is a good example of it. You see the dungeon music is on at the moment. Mario took a star, became quite cool. You see, the music's changed. Uh, the action of that um, level up thing ended, and he and the music came back to the previous state. Now, that's the vertical system. In the vertical system, all the musical fragments are played simultaneously. But we can connect. Uh, certain parameters of each of the layers that are being played to certain game parameters, say the distance to something. And one track, uh, and you can transition from one layer to the other depending on how the game states change. I'll give you a Hollis Springs Fall uh, example. Well, one has to climb on top of the tower dealing with puzzles and there's a huge cloud uh, chasing us and the closer we are to the cloud the more additional layers are being played at the moment the more uh, music play, uh, layers are being played at the moment I'll show you can we turn the sound a little bit higher please yeah pad has been uh, played now piano is on because the clouds moving and uh, encroaching on us Yeah, the cloud is getting closer and closer. Uh, R&B is in the game. And we're almost in the cloud, and we hear the qua. So all the four tracks, all the four layers and fragments are being played simultaneously. And the closer you are to this huge black cloud, the louder these effects become. But how do we... Um, approach uh, building interactive music in WY's sound engine. <laughs> Let me show you that. Uh, not very convenient because I can't really see what I'm doing in the screen. I'm just seeing it on that teleprompter. So I just built a, a small project with just one interactive track to show you the way it's done. So that's the horizontal and the vertical system. And I'll also explain to you what's transition and stingers. So here, to the left. 
part one, part two, part four, part five. These are the fragments that I'll use to demonstrate to the horizontal system. You will see that they will change, or one will transition to the other as soon as the game states change. And there's an additional layer, uh, which will depend on a game parameter. And that will demonstrate us a vertical system, right? It's going to go in parallel. Then there is a special sound, sound effect. That's a transition sound effect. Can you please add up the volume, because that's too soft? Yeah, that's nice. Now, that's the transition, the so-called transition sound. It's going to be played every time we switch between the states, the game states. It's going to color in terms of sound our transitions. Now, there's another sound effect here. That's a stinger. We're going to build it in, the whole musical pattern. After the game event is over, I've established the game event in here. That's the shot. So the music will play, then there's going to be a shot, and sometime, uh, as soon as the um, uh, beat changes, that musical effect will uh, play on. Now, we've entered the game, that's the first state. The music is on. Unless something happens in the game, this music piece will be cycled. So it's going to start all over again. Now you see, it's on again. But then the state changes in the game. And you've heard the transition clearly. And not only the second pass started playing, but it's happened on it's happened on the re, on the uh, upbeat. So when it had to start, it's happened exactly when it had to start. Now state number three, moving on. You see the bass is on. Uh, and the game event is on. Stinger. Stinger is over now. And what happened? And the game parameter starts changing. For some reason, the mouse is failing, but it should have been done gradually up to 100%, and the second layer is gradually appearing in the whole sound pattern. Let me do it again and again. Let me use the second state, uh, where the uh, uh, musical instruments are not so numerous, so to speak, and the uh, sound density is uh, smaller. So we take off this uh, variable parameter, now it's 0%, and we put on the synthesizer, so the piano, the e-piano on top. Uh, yeah, let me come back to the presentation. Should I go? Uh -huh. uh, now, World of Worships. The musical system here is uh, built uh, with the use of horizontal and vertical system transitions, systems, everything that WISE allows you to do. We did it. Simplified um, flow chart is here. Pretty simple. These are the all. These are the major game states. Login, menu, download, uh, matchmaking, combat, bat battle. Uh, so we use the main theme in the main menu in the port, so you can use London parts in Petersburg, Black Sea, and many others. And for each of those ports, we have an individual sound, we have an individual song, and it's also a multi-layered one, because we use the vertical system there. The transition, the gradual movement from one to the other, you can do that, you can switch over by using tabs. 
Yeah, we have a set of composition uh, during the download, um, which are selected randomly, and then matchmaking. Uh, the combat, the battle is the most interesting one. I'll tell you more about that later. later. Now, let me show you how the port system works. The ver I'm sorry, let me show you how the vertical system works in the port when you switch over between the tabs. That's the main menu, right? The, 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 where, the, the one where you see your ship. Can you have it again louder a little bit? Now we switch over to the modules tab. You see, there is a gradual transition to the second version of the arrangement. Some woman, wo some lady, uh, w women's voices are on. Now we're moving on to another tab, the profile one. Now the music dissolutes and it turns into a wave beat. Coming back to the modules. So these are the three options of the track. Same harmony, but a little bit different arrangements. It's a little bit of, it's a feature that we have there. A small one, a tiny cherry in the cake. Now, uh, let's see the battle now. The most important and interesting stuff, because we have three major step uh, states in here, exploring, detecting, battle, and there's a separate step here for the weather. When your weather events when when you're in exploring phase, you just uploaded the game, you start sailing, you set sail until you're being uh, detected. As soon as you're being detected, we move on to the detected state. And it's going to play until you are, you're jumping into the battle, well, until the first shell hits you, and then you go in with the battle state. And the battle music will play until the uh, battle runs off, or it will play until um, in a uh, certain distance there's going to be not a single ship or enemy. And then we continue with exploring. And it all repeats so over and over again. Detected and battle will come on. And well, as soon as our weather, well, as soon as weather uh, effects appeared in the game. We've added variable effects, variable tracks. These are multi-layered musical structures in which some of the elements, or maybe all of the elements, are replayed with every new, well, we have random, randomized containers. And with every new play, we're selecting from each of those random containers a new element. It means that these tracks, every time they're being played again, are becoming almost unique unrepeated, so to speak, because they're construed of several random elements. Can you see that? I'm moving my mouse, and uh, you will be able to see an example of a simple variable track. We have three layers in here. That's the first one. With every new play, yeah, this whole thing plays around. Uh, you see it consists of uh, eight beats. And this is the first randomized container made out of five different um, versions of one phrase and the second one. And with every new play out of this two, um, randomly, a section, a fragment, is going to be selected. Now, how does it all sound, you would ask? Everything that's played is now marked in green. So how does it look in the reality, I mean, in the game? We have two variable tracks for the weather state, and they're being played one after the other. So the first cycle starts. Uh, it plays for four beats. Then we move on to the second, or for four times. Then we move to the second cycle, and is also uh, it also plays for four times. And then there are cycles. So that's the transition to the weather. And the first soundscape starts, yeah. 
It could have, well, again, that's a random selection. The second one could have also been selected easily. Let me rewind it a little bit because it's uh, too uh, long to wait until the transition happens. Yeah, here we're moving on to a next segment. We're moving on to the transition to move to the next state. And the second variable track is on at the moment. Well, the structure is a little bit more difficult, but the system is uh, pretty simple. I mean, it's almost the same. The next feature I call Battle 1 and Battle 2. That's how I call it, and I'll explain you why. So for the battle state, I mean, the thing that happens after you're being hit, we have about 70 different musical pieces, songs, with introduction, with the development, with the culmination, and the finals. And previously, they would all just be played this way. As soon as you are in the battle, um, track number 50 will randomly be selected. After it's complete, track number 5 is going to be selected. Same random choice. And then 70. But what I did, I took all of those 70 compositions and I identified in which one of them two interesting elements in the beginning and in the end. And how are they interesting? Well, I don't know, some super epic drums or the choir uh, is on or there is a suspense build in the music and uh, there is a low like plane in the music. So how did we do that? We identified some important events in the player for the player in the game not so frequent ones, but uh, uh, some interesting ones, such as a double kill, right? It's an interesting event, and you want to sound it, or domination, when uh, the scales, uh, well, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the power scales shift towards somebody else, I mean, your enemy in the game. Or, well, I'll show you how the double kill happens. So imagine we have track number 11, and then we use the transition, this additional sound effect. Again, at the upbeat, uh, moves on to itself, meaning moves inside itself to this interesting moment in this music. But the thing is, in Vice, you cannot rewind the track. You cannot transition one track to itself. The track doesn't transition to itself in Vice. So what I did, I just copied the whole structure, the whole playlist of those 70 tracks. And I, uh, so if something interesting happens, just the state changes from battle one to battle two, or from battle two to battle one. And th the transitions are set in such a way that if in battle one, we had track number 20. As soon as you transition to battle two, you'll still be at track number 20. And if you were at track number 30, you'd still be at track number 30. But then you will hit the second marker, right, with this transition. When you move back to battle or to battle one again, you get back to another marker, right? In order not to lose the energy again, we're not starting all over again from the introduction. You get to marker one. and. Uh, yeah, there's this nice transition, and this marker one will just develop on and build on the music, and that's it. Again, if you move to battle two, same thing happens. Now let me show you the way it sounds. And that's the battle music. Then an event is on. And the track just rewinded to itself. Just fast forward to another market. Another event. And moving back again to battle one. And then there's going to be another event. And it's going to once again hit market two. So this system allows us to increase the interactiveness, the level of interactivity of the music without just generating new content. We take the tracks we already have and we're just jumping all over them. 
Uh, next feature, uh, the next feature I'm going to show you is the MIDI sounding for all those 70 battle tracks. Well, some of you in the know, MIDI are like digital notes. Um, these are the tracks that contain no info. They just have the info of where and when, with what kind of sound level, something has to be turned on. So I took all those 70 tracks and I developed those MIDI notes myself individually. They have to reproduce drum samples. And in Vice, uh, yeah, I've created those uh, drum samples myself with different drums and different drum music. So as soon as the battle track is on, uh, you start approaching the enemy, and the sound level of those tracks is, uh, de is, is dependent on the uh, proximity to the enemy. So 50 meters to the enemy, additional drums are being uh, increased in, volumes, in volume, and they make the music more expressive, and I'll show you how it sounds. So now it's just the top track that is being played without any additional drums. We are approaching the enemy. And then that's the maximum proximity. And the drums uh, are in full swing, if you want. Sailing back. Well, of course, in the game, it, you can't really sail that fast to your enemy. It happens much more gradually and smoother, and the drums are increasing in volume uh, ever so slightly. So this system allowed us to improve the interactiveness of the battle music we had, but at the same time, we used a very uh, limited number of samples which do not increase the uh, processing uh, uh, capacity of that or the, uh, uh, the heaviness of that thing. Now, let me talk about other states, exploring just before you enter the battle, before you're being detected, and then the detected state before the first shell hits you. And for each and every state, we have our playlist, I think 16 tracks in each. And the way we build this, the way we compose this music, uh, we wrote exploring one music with a detected one, or exploring five with detected five. So we did it together, because you, the exploring and the detected states, they have to be the same. It's the same music entity. So if we had track number five during the exploring state, it means that when you will move on to detect it, it's still going to be the fifth track. Uh, it means that the music will just build on itself. Uh, but there was also an, a vertical system included. It's a double-layered cake. And the transition between the layers is dependent on the distance and proximity to the enemy. Let me show you the way it works. Yeah, that's the map. We are um, there and we're sailing. And then we're being detected. Yeah, the, uh, you see the enemy ships on the horizon. Hear the base. And now we're approaching them. The second layer is now being played. And you're being hit. That's the sound of transitioning from detected to battle. And the battle music is on. Now, there are no enemies in 5 KMs around us. And there's one more transition. 
и музыка опять расплывается в эмбиент. And we'll transition to the uh, corresponding detected state music, and then again we go into the hit state. That's it for me, guys. Yeah, share, like, repost, as they say. Unless there are any questions. Hello there. How did you? How do you write that? I mean, how do you compose the music? You just make one big composition and then you tear it apart into several samples or you just do it initially? No, initially you have to devise the structure first. So structure first, sample second. And then you just arrange the stuff. Do you have a special system, a software for it? No, 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 I'm just, I'm just devising it all yeah, uh, while I go. Yeah, creativity. Any limitations to what you can do? Because sampling system... It yeah it it allow well it makes you be repeated right you have just the same number of times and the same like square structure well if you uh, compose a soundtrack in the horror game you can go away from rhythm and you can just do soundscapes remember I uh, showed you the ver variable tracks. But we had a very rhythmic music. We had the times, we had the upbeats and downbeats. What you can do is you can do a whole lot of randomized containers that will be put on without any tempo, without any upbeats, like synchronization, lots of layers. They're all going to be transitioning one to the other, generating new music structure every time. And we did it, I think, for the Halloween version once. Any more questions? Sava, I'm here. Hello. Hi like a person that has nothing to do with the sound. Amazing presentation, liked it so much. A couple of questions. The first one is a sad one. For how many people do you do that? I mean, how many do you follow? How many players actually turn the music off in the game? A lot, a lot, but a lot don't. Yeah, the second question, I'm just interested. Me being a player in the world of warships, after I looked at this presentation, will I, ga will I gain a game advantage by knowing how the stuff works? Will I be, well, do you think if I'm more attentive listening to the music? Well, it's going to be more interesting for you, pretty sure. Okay, then. I think, yeah, you now got to learn everything one has to learn about the music. Sava, I have a question. Because in a normal soundtrack in the game, the most important stuff is the composer's vision, like a key theme in the soundtrack. Here, your key theme depends on the gameplay, but World of Warship uh, gets new battle regimes, new maps, new battlefields. Are you developing in this sphere? Like when you get to interact with some shore objects, the convoys, PW, yeah, maybe we'll do a special sound regime. And yeah, and we'll probably include the horizontal, vertical uh, stuff into it. Yeah, we're going to try that for sure. Sava, so I have a question. What happens when the states change in a very short period of time? Like the cruiser or the, um, I'm sorry, miner. It's constantly first in the detected, exploring, and uh, battle state transition. And it happens in a very short period of time. So what happens when those states change so rapidly that it might introduce some dissonance or chaos into the music? What you can do in, well, in WISE, you can set up the transition time. So exploring to detected transition may happen in just 15 seconds or 10 seconds. I think 10 seconds is the setup today. So when the states start jumping one to the other, you, the things that you said will not happen. That's exactly needed for that. All right. Yeah, one more question here. Hello. Thanks a lot. Very interesting presentation. My question is, the last transitions. Yeah, when you go, go from battle to exploring again. 
it's a little bit too, too sharp, I think. It's high tension music, very energetic, and then for some reason it goes, it falls down into a, a very calm state. Have you ever thought of making it smoother? Maybe you're right. Maybe we should do it a smoother uh, transition. But there's one big problem. The battle music has to be high tension, and it has to be very energetic, and you have to dissolve it into ambience. So what I did is not just a transition sound, this additional transition sound, but what I also did, I have a special channel there on the bus with a uh, reverberator. The reverberator is the stuff that creates reflections. So you can do reflections like in a cave for, for 10 seconds or so. So it uh, reverberates. And during the transition, we signal the reverberator. So knowing the notes that were played in the music during the last battle, they are being sent onto the reverberator. And then the echo of the battle music continues to roll for 10 seconds. And then exploring gradually, um, gradually moves along. So maybe we should do something better here. You're right. Thanks. A very interesting stuff you were showing. Being a player, I can tell that it's become much more interesting to play with interactive music. Thanks. The question. You've been telling how music follows the player's actions. Have you ever thought of the music preempting the uh, player's actions and influencing the game process? Have you ever thought about that? the music that forecasts. I don't know. I have never looked at it. I don't know even, even if it's possible to prognose and forecast and preempt. Well, if you know that there is a, uh, I don't know, a cruiser behind the, uh, behind the, uh, the rock, and then the music will tell you, but it will be a cheat. Yeah, it will be spoiling for sure. You will, you will get lots of spoils there. But basically, it's possible. But in our game, since it's important, I mean, all those things, nothing to hint you where your enemy is, I don't think the music should do that. Well, what we want is the music to just become the part of the overall gaming process. Well, that's an interesting thought. Yeah, probably the answer was yes, but no. Thank you. Thank you very much. A very interesting presentation. Thanks. I've never played World of Warships or World of Tanks, unfortunately. My son does play, though. But I, start, I had tried to limit him. But I have a purely musical question. Have you ever thought In the world of worship music, to make not a layered cake of various tracks or samples, and that's the way it all should develop, but every time choosing and selecting a unique sample or a unique music piece based on the player's actions, like a tune that you've, been in, you've had in the beginning, and then it's and then it progresses and develops based on the game character, so to speak, or the game progression or the gameplay, becoming more difficult, gaining complexity, uh, well, following the music rules. But it's just well, the tune uh, assumes new harmony, new melodies, based on the gamer's character or game based on the gamer's activity. Well, it's a very difficult task. Yeah, I know how it can be done and how it can be realized, but only in some minor, smaller games, like indie games, where we could use such uh, synthesized sounds and music is going to be generated. But in the battleships, we have to use the orchestra. We have to use real live instruments, right? So yeah, I dream of making something like you say, but unfortunately, I uh, didn't do it yet for the music to be generated in the real time. like. Building the music. Yeah, Mr. Victor wants to take the floor. Thank you very much for the presentation. 
One, two, one, two. Thanks a lot. As far as I gathered, when the music plays, several layers play simultaneously, and one transfers to the other. Do you think it creates additional load? Because four of them have to be played, and we don't hear three and only one? Yeah, you have to just adequately know your capabilities, and you should know how much more sounds is being replayed in the game at this moment, and you just have to, to be cautious about that. That's it. That's the rule. Alexei? Uh, thank you, Slava, for Sava. I'm sorry for the very interesting presentation. It's not a question. It's more of a uh, a comment, or rather, an answer to the question of our friend in here, a colleague. The thing is, when the layers are being put one on top of the other, the things that you don't hear, it goes into the so-called virtual voices. And the virtual voices are produced with a very low CPU load. They don't even go to the render. They are calculated used, uh, by using a special mesh. When all those layers are coded, then the mesh is created, uh, and then the playback marker well, just follows in the background, and it doesn't produce any additional load. We've tried and tested it at World of War t uh, of Tanks, and everything is fine and good. Up to 15 layers can now be played, and everything's perfect. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. I am a programmer, and I integrate all the sounds. But now our company tries to move on to WISE. So how this interaction with programmers uh, is done? What do we have to provide to the uh, audio engine and what audio designers get? We have our own programmer in the audio department that works with us. I tell him what I need. Say, I want this distance to the proximity to the enemy. Yeah, he devises everything, he builds everything. I've got all the necessary parameters I need. So I don't have to think about that. And then another question. Does WISE allow you to visualize sounds? Meaning, meaning like a beat, and uh, the screen has to add in a blink with the beat. You mean spectral analyzer or what? Something like that. We don't have spectral analyzers in WISE. We have uh, volume analyzers, the signal output analyzers. Alexei yesterday has told us about uh, the flex analyzer. You can see the sound picture of everything you do, basically. Yeah, there's a, an assistance from a friend. If no, it's not the spectrum output from the output channel, meaning how can you link it to the visual interface, basically, to the interface itself. In VICE, there is a special bus called Motion Bus. And you can, uh, well, one can do interactions with joysticks and every other uh, input devices or output devices already connected to this uh, motion. Uh, we can take even the vibration from the joystick. Basically, this Motion Bus, we've tried it. And we prototyped it for like shaking the camera, say, when you hit. So, yeah, you can do it. It just uh, requires an additional code. And why can manage and can singles on to other parts of your game, so to speak? Have I answered your question? Yes, I have. Thank you. Any more? Hello. Hello. Sorry. I was uh, a little bit late because I was trying to sit on two chairs, and I have a question that worries me. Probably has already been voiced in the beginning of the lecture. Dynamic music, you know, has been used for a long time in video gaming, and what I would like to know from you is what, a, what game inspired you to use something similar in your project. An example. Because I remember the first time dynamic music was used was at Stalker game. Yeah, the Chernobyl Shadow. And there were other projects like that. So have you got this idea from a different game? Or have you arrived to that personally by yourself? 
Well, this idea is just logical. It's Everybody would definitely come to it. In the game of 2017, you have to have a music that reflects the, the, the gaming, the gameplay. Yeah, and I played a lot of games where dynamic music is used. Talos Princeful, I liked. I liked that in the finals they added a track that just uh, layers uh, one on top of the other. Battlefield, I like that. Yeah, many other games as well. Why should you ask? Thanks a lot. Thank you. That's it. Sava, I have a question. Personally, I'm looking like over the uh, shoulders onto the warships, but I do love the music. And since music adjusts to the player's actions, you don't really get to hear those beautiful, juicy compositions. Maybe we should, uh, I don't know, produce a CD disc with soundtracks like we use in the game. No, we had it. We had it. We have OST, wor Word of Worships. Yeah, I'm going to buy that. Uh, here's my money. Take it. Any more questions? Any more questions, guys? Thanks a lot for the presentation. I've got a question. When you work with interactive music, there is, well, you are lured. Well, it might be that you choose to just stay in one uh, tonality. And uh, how do you deal with this issue uh, by not sticking in one key, in one tonality? Do you, um, well, do you know, do you have a certain trigger that gets you to uh, change your key, basically? Yeah, remember I was telling you that if you're moving um, gr from one fragment to the other, and if these two fragments are different in terms of the tonality, in terms of keys, and in terms of the structure, this transition is not going smooth. So yeah, it's a very difficult task. If you choose the classical approach, you can't really create a music with some um, subtle key variations and tempo variations, but that's a challenge. And I strive to, well, handle that challenge. But you're exactly right. So what you try to do is, first you write your music in one key, in the second key, just a little bit of variation there and there. But since I'm a little limited, I mean, I can't really use lots of musical complex structures. But like in modern music, it's more about sound designing. So what we have to create is not a very interesting musical structure, but a very interesting structure of a musical spectrum and tell the story using the spectrum, so to speak. Yeah. So more of a variability in the spectrum itself rather in the musical pieces. I think that was the last question. Let us thank the composer for a very interesting lecture. Thank you very much. You're a great audience.
Hi, we're with one of our speakers who just uh, gave you speech here. Please introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Alex uh, Shpilov. I am uh, head of uh, gaming and esports at wiki.com. Hi. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. Uh, so tell us, what's your favorite video game? Uh, well, at this moment, my favorite game is Destiny 2. I have already spent a lot of hours in it, and it's really awesome. It is, I gotta tell you. But this is a new game. What about the very first video game you've played? Do you remember it? The first game was uh, the first Quake. I played it with my dad <laughs> in my childhood. That's really great childhood memories, I guess. Uh, so uh, tell me, uh, how did you get to, uh, to the gaming industry? Uh, well, I was a um, user of some fan community about Steam and uh, Valve games, and uh, I began to translate some games from uh, some news articles and uh, so on from uh, English to Russian and uh, Valve invited, in, invited me to translate their games uh, as a volunteer and after this I became such a dedicated uh, employee at Valve and now I'm here. <laughs> uh, so uh, and what do you think about 4C? Uh, it's uh, my second 4C. I uh, have already visited 4C in Kiev uh, the last year and uh, it's really cool. I really love it. Well, I hope you love this one as well and I hope you get lots of uh, new knowledge um, and share the knowledge as well. Did you have any questions uh, from the audience that you really liked? Yeah, uh, the audience was cool. They asked um, really cool questions and I hope I, uh, it, my speech was really useful for them. It definitely was. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Uh Hi, we've got one of our speakers again and wanted to ask him some questions. Hi, introduce yourself, please. Hi, my name is Andrei Sarafanov. I'm a senior 3D artist from Wargaming. I'm working on World of Tanks project and creating 3D models of our tanks. Fantastic. Andrew, tell me, uh, what's the very first game that you've played? Do you remember it? Uh, actually, I think it was Tetris. Yes, I was amazed by the quality of the assets. <laughs> I love to play this game all the time, and uh, but later after I saw what computer games can do, I was mm, just I've tried to move to the PC gaming, and now I'm working on PC huge PC titles, and I love it. Well, that's uh, easy. Tetris had a fantastic destruction engine for its time, yeah. uh, but was it your favorite game, or which one is your favorite game of all time today? Uh, actually, today I like to play in, in, in our game Tanks, and uh, Tetris was more like uh, I had nothing to play, <laughs> only Tetris, and uh, today Tanks pretty much solves all my uh, wishes, and I, all, all I want I can find in this game. It's kind of simple, pretty fast not very long session and I have a lot of time to work on my own, own projects so that's why I like to play the world of tanks. Great, uh, what led you to the gaming industry? How did you come to this uh, industry, to this job? Yeah, actually I saw interesting 
uh, CG artist challenge in the internet and I saw cool character art from different artists all over the world and I was amazed that uh, young guys can create uh, such amazing art so I decided to try this out and uh, I found that it's not very it's not that hard and I can learn that stuff and I did it as my in my st in my spare time just like a side project from my uh, main main job and uh, I was noticed by Wargaming at, at some point and they invited me to join their team and now I'm doing tanks. That sounds like a great deal. Uh, so I'm glad to have you in the industry. What's your favorite thing about it? Just about the game development? Yeah, I like um, the diversity of this uh, industry because it's, it changes a lot and it has a lot of different branches uh, all over the world, different people. Uh, creating very interesting experience and every year you need to adapt to the changes um, and uh, learn new things and it, it is very um, uh, f fast moving industry and I, I, l I love it because you need to learn every day we definitely all love the industry, but there are maybe some frustrations, something that you don't like that makes you sad in the state of the gaming industry today? Well, uh, maybe some tools are not developed enough to meet our requirements, so we have to do too much uh, technical work as an artist. But uh, with every year, this uh, issue uh, resolves little by little, so I think it's pretty okay to work these days, so it's not, not a lot of problems, but a lot of fun. I agree with you there, it definitely change, uh, changes quickly. Uh, where do you think the industry will be like in 10 years time? Uh, do you vision any trends? As far as I can see, uh, VR industry, uh, it didn't have a good start, but uh, it certainly takes space. Uh, I saw a lot of good examples for artists, like uh, software to paint in uh, virtual reality. It works really well and uh, I think uh, through the special software VR will take its place and uh, at some point uh, mo most of uh, game projects will go to VR in the future. So you think it's going to be the next big thing for everyone, right? Yes, of course, because uh, it's really immersive experience and uh, you don't have an, any boundaries in VR when you use VR headset. And it's, it slowly but surely takes, takes its place and I think we will be there. Yeah, the immersion definitely improves with both VR and just the quality of graphics. Uh, but do you think uh, the graphics are more important than the storyline or the gameplay maybe is in the front or a mixture of uh, some of these? Oh, you need to balance uh, every aspect of your game. Mm, as an artist, I know that uh, a lot of details are not uh, that important. It's the more important the basic structure you want to show to the viewer and you need to have like basic shapes uh, which will be easy to read and uh, a narrative is a good example if you have a good narrative it will it, it can help you to support your characters and all your um, gameplay mechanics so i think you need to balance every aspect of your game and you will get success achieve success uh, do you have any vision of a game that you'd like to create if you weren't restricted uh, anyhow financially or creatively or professionally, just create anything? Yeah, and I'm not sure about the genre, but uh, in my spare time I want to create some universes. I'm, I'm doing it at the time and uh, maybe at some point I will make some game projects from the assets I've created. So. I'm working on it, but I'm not sure what will it be. Well, whatever it may be, I hope to, it turns out well for you. Um, but right now we're here in St. Pete. What do you think about the city? Uh, it's my second time in the city and the uh, weather this time is much better. And I love it because the architecture is amazing. Never saw anything like, like this before. 
And uh, I love to visit museums. There is an artillery museum here. And I'm, as a tank artist, love to visit such um, exhibitions. I saw a lot of cool stuff and we'll visit the city again in the future, for sure. It's great that you like it, but as far as I understand, uh, 4C is one of the primary goals of your visit. Uh, what do you think about the, the event? Yeah, event was... Uh, I didn't expect that so much speakers will come in one place. And uh, I'm amazed by the quality of the um, organization structure so far. So, so far I love it. It's a very cool conference. Do you have a favorite question that you were asked before the the start of the conference yet? Favorite question? No, I don't have it. Uh, what would you ask yourself then? If you were interviewing yourself, uh, what would you like to open up with? Uh, what would you ask yourself? Well... I don't know. It's kind of a hard question for me. It's fine, but it's kind of a retrospective thing. Uh, and um, any presentation that you're particularly looking, looking forward to? Which one would you like to hear? Uh, I've met a couple interesting people here, and uh, I, I will attend their presentation for sure. But there are many of them, so I will not pick uh, any one of them. Well, I hope you get a favorite sometime along the line, and I hope you like the event overall. Thank you very much for your participation. Thank you.